Hey everybody, welcome back to the Engineered Angler. You guys remember these shrimp. This was a project that I covered, oh, I don't know how many videos ago. This is where I went from just a sketch on the dry erase board to actually making a blank and then making a mold of my master and then starting to make lures. When I made this first uh, mold, it kind of glued itself together. The silicone went bad and uh, just adhered to itself, even though I smeared it with uh, Vaseline and I had to sort of cut it apart with a razor knife. And while this has been working to make some lures, uh, I haven't been real happy with it. I knew I was gonna have to make a new one anyway. So what I did is I took the opportunity to go ahead and cast uh, a lure and then refine the original features so that the lure had a little more wobble on retrieve. Now my original intention was just to use this as a twitch and jerk bait. just have a little bit of wiggle when I gave it a sweeping retrieve but I kind of like the uh, the swimming action as it's getting pulled tail first and so I wanted to enhance that so you can see the mold is much more compact than the original one and it's certainly uh, much cleaner for now my goal in this video is to turn this shrimp bait from a sinking twitch bait to a topwater waking bait some of the modifications I made to the master uh, was done with that in mind. Let me show you up close uh, just some subtle changes I made. You can see the white one, the most recent casting, is much thinner in the tail fluke and it's a little flatter on the uh, backside surface. This one's a little more sort of rounded. There was also a little bit of asymmetry in there that I uh, pretty much got all out. I've tested it and it does have a really nice tight wobble. Now the other thing I did was to lower the, the uh, location of the tie-on hook. If you can see this one is uh, much higher than this one. And here's a nice finished lure that I cast in a new mold. And you can see how that tie-on eye is nice and low on the very top face of the diving surface. And that gives you a big wobble. Now, the only drawback is that you could uh, destabilize it and end up having the lure wanting to sort of roll on you or spin. So now we're going to go from the twitch bait slash crankbait behavior to a topwater waking bait. And I'm going to show you how I transition that design with weight and balance. All right, so here's a really basic sketch of the lure. There's a hook eye here, and the tie-on eye is back here. Now I've been placing my weight pretty much near the head, and I think you'll be able to clearly see it inside this uh, little soft plastic. Let me put some light behind it. You can see the shadow of that four gram split shot just behind the eye. So having the weight near the head on this is essentially on the back of the lure as you retrieve it. So that's really good for a twitch bait because it gives you more of an erratic movement. When you stop pulling, that weight wants to continue to move inertia, right? And you still have a lot of drag with this fin and it'll want to twitch to one side or the other. But since I want it a little less erratic and a little more of a sort of cranking top water bait, I'm going to move the weight forward but try to keep it kind of low, which is not gonna be easy on a lure this uh, thin. So I'm gonna place my weight here and it'll be attached on the wire that comes like this and then extends out. 
So before we get too far along, let's go ahead and talk about the resin mix. Now I'm using a two-part polyurethane uh, casting resin uh, made by Specialty Resins. And typically I'll use what I call a 10% mix, which is a pretty buoyant uh, resin mix. And what that means is that if I have six grams of part A, six grams of part B, that gives me 12 grams total of the resin. And then I add 1.2 grams of micro balloon, 10% of the total weight. And some of you have pointed out accurately that uh, 1.2 grams is not going to be 10% of the total mix. That is true, but I don't want that because it creates a problem doing any kind of correction while I'm pouring this. For instance, if I pour six and a half grams, uh, I'll want to come back and pour six and a half grams of B uh, to make sure the mix will cure. And that means all I got to do is mix in 1.3 grams of micro balloons. The math, it's super simple. You can do it in your head. But if you're doing an actual percent by mass of the total mass, then the calculation for that correction is pretty complicated. And you don't want to have to do that on the fly. So with this small lure, all I'm going to need is four grams of A, four grams of B, and 0.8 grams of micro balloons. All right, so I've already fabricated some of these wire harnesses and that makes it easy. I can just drop this on there and get the weight of it. But I'm also gonna weigh one of these uh, dressed treble hooks and we'll weigh that as well. So I got 1.78 grams in hook, split ring and wire. Now I wanna go ahead and cast my first one without having to do any, any uh, experimentation. I wanna have the weight in it and have it right. So to be able to do that, I need the density of this mix. Now, luckily I've used it a lot and I've already made the little test puck, uh, which is just a sample poured into a measuring cup. I know exactly the volume, I can weigh it and then I, I do the, uh, the division. The density comes to 0 0.576 grams per milliliter. You can see it written right there. All right, so I also have the density of the specialty resin without any kind of uh, filler in it at all, no micro balloons. I need to know what the volume of my lure is. And since I've already cast uh, this as a master with zero micro balloons, I can just weigh this. And with that weight, I can use my density of 0 0.837 grams per milliliter. That's all we need. Let's start weighing and we get 9.07 grams. All right, so we've got the weight of the body and to get the volume of the body, we just divide by the density of the mix that we use, 0.837. So our volume is equal to 10.85 milliliters. What that means is that since water weighs one gram per milliliter, for this lure to be exactly neutral, it would have to weigh 10.85 grams and that would include the hook and the hardware. So now we're gonna figure out what this lure is gonna weigh when we make it out of the lighter material. So all we're gonna do is take the volume we know and multiply it times the density of the material we're gonna use. And that comes out to 6.25 grams. So since I know that my hardware is 1.78, I can add that to that weight. That gives me 8.03. And so that means I can actually add an extra 2.8 grams to the body and still have it more or less neutrally buoyant. But I'm not gonna add that much. I need it to be pretty buoyant. So I'm gonna add a gram and a half, maybe two grams. So this little split shot weighs 2.26. I wanna cut a little bit off of it. There you go, 2.09. And I'm gonna attach this split shot right at the very tail or near there try to center it on the wire. And unfortunately, I forgot to get the resin bottles out of the refrigerator so they're freezing cold. I'm gonna have to stick them in front of the little room heater and come back to it in a little while. All right, these guys are ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour out four grams of the first part. And we're gonna go ahead and get, I'll tear this zero it again and let's get 0.8 grams 
of the microfibers or the micro balloons. There it is, right on the money. Now I'm going to go ahead and pour four grams of the second part. Just blend this up. It's pretty amazing how quick this stuff kicks off. Okay, that's exact. So while we wait for that casting to be ready to be demolded, I wanted to show you a quick trick that I came up with to tie these little dressed treble hooks so that those little filaments stick out and look like legs and they don't just sort of droop down. And let me just say that I, I'm no expert in uh, tying flies by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, what I'm going to show you now is just a little trick with UV resin to create a way to make those little tentacles kind of flare out. Let me show you. So the idea is just to create a little bead where the tips of the hooks are uh, aligning with the shank. And all I'm going to do is put a tiny droplet of UV resin right there, maybe a little more. And then I, I rotate it over so it's sagging under just its own weight. And then I'll hit it with the UV light. And hopefully you can see that little droplet. And then I'm, I'm just going to continue that process all the way around until I have a full bead. And just in a couple of minutes, you have a nice little bead that won't slide, won't come off, and will give you that place to sort of tie off and get those filaments to spread off. Let me tie the first one and you'll see what I'm talking about. And you can see how it wants to just jump out and I can do that all the way around. Now just trimming the very tips off. Don't want too much on there. So you can see, I put a little bit of extra UV resin on the line and we're looking pretty good just like that. All right, this looks like it's ready to go. We've already calculated what the weight should be. So when we weigh it, it should pretty much weigh what we expect it to weigh uh, unless we made a, we, I made a mistake. All right, it looks pretty good. Looks like my vent worked pretty well. And we'll just pull this off. All right, so I'm going to clean it up a little more and then we'll weigh it. All right, so I've got it cleaned up and I cut my finger. Thank you. And let's go ahead and weigh it. Let's see what we end up with. We're shooting for somewhere right at 10 grams. It should be a little over 10 grams, I think. Um, with the amount of weight we put in, it should be like 10.1, uh, something like that. But uh, we got 8.74 before the hook and got to have the hook and the split ring. And we got 10.04 grams, 03 grams. That's pretty doggone close. All right, let's see what it looks like in the water. And you can see it floats head up. That's going to look pretty cool in the water. As soon as I get a paint job on this, we'll take it down to the dock and we'll give it a test. All right, it's the next day and I've gone ahead and uh, cast two other lures with a little bit of a shift in the weight. Essentially, the weight is the same, but I'm moving the weight towards the head uh, little by little. So one floats almost level and the other floats slightly head down. And I made these because while all these calculations can tell me just how much weight to put in it, more or less, uh, it's not going to tell me exactly how this thing is going to behave uh, with the weight and the balance of the weight in the body. So you got to experiment. Since I'm going to paint them all exactly the same, I'll just show you how I paint one. And as usual, I just want to remind everybody, if you enjoy these kind of videos, let me know and uh, give me a like. It really does help the channel out. And if you haven't subscribed, certainly subscribe and click that bell and all that good stuff. I need to buy lights, man. They just keep falling. <laughs> First thing I'm going to do is put just some opaque white. Uh, 
All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and spray it with some pearlescent white and get that really cool shimmery look before we go on to some colors. I should probably give this a little time to dry since I put quite a bit of paint on it, uh, but I'm in a rush. I want to put sh uh, some dark sort of shadowy colors right in the center of the shells uh, and then we'll put some highlighting colors in the actual divisions between the shells. I'm going to go with this color here. It's a, actually a transparent color. They call it uh, midnight blue. It's actually kind of, a, I would say kind of a blue smoke, mostly black, but it's transparent. Now I've got those dark panels. I've got to give uh, the little lines in between the shell panels uh, a little bit of a highlight. And I'm gonna use a uh, transparent brown, which is essentially a copper color. But I'm gonna use something I have never used. This is a random shape kind of stencil and it's got all kinds of little random uh, little holes in it and stuff. So I'm gonna grab a little area and give it a little spritz sort of on each panel with the blue. Let's see what it looks like. <laughs> that looks kind of cool. Let's go ahead and just do it on all of them. All right, that's kind of interesting. Not sure if I would do it again, <laughs> but got to experiment, man, even with the paint. I'm going to go ahead and set it aside and start working on the other ones. So um, I'm nearly done with this one. The only thing left to do is to give it a mid coat with polyacrylic, and then I'll let all of them sit overnight and dry really well before I put a clear coat on them. I also got to put some eyes on them too. So a little bit of work, but I'll see y'all tomorrow. It's the next day. It's windy outside, so you might hear the wind chimes going. Uh, but I've got these essentially ready to put eyes on them and then put a clear coat on them and turn them. And what I'm doing now is prepping the uh, little stem eyes. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Since I want these little shrimp to have a little stem eyes like I did on this one. And these are just beads painted black uh, sitting on a monofilament little stem. So I've got a bunch of these little pink beads on a piece of monofilament and I'm just going to paint them black. All right, that should do it. And now I just need to assemble the eyes and I'm going to use some 60 pound test uh, monofilament leader. And it fits pretty nice in the bead. I'll just glue it on with a little bit of UV resin. I'll put a little droplet of the UV resin as glue and I'll just slide it up there and hit it with the light. The cool thing about monofilament is it acts like a fiber optic. It'll actually carry this UV light into it. All right, here they are. Eyeballs and everything. All right, I've got them on these holders. All right, I'm just using, uh, this is Aluma UV, and about the 
Whew, the last little bit of it too. I'm gonna get it on the beads for the eyes and everything. I want everything coated. Now I'm gonna go ahead and slide my wheel back a little bit and stick this in here and I'll go ahead and let it rotate for a while. That'll give it a chance to settle out and any bubbles to leave. All right, uh, that makes three of them. I'm gonna go ahead and shut the lid and turn the lights on and we'll be back in about an hour. All right, that looks pretty sweet. Check it out. There's one more element I need to put on there before the hook. And that's the little tuft of uh, tentacles coming out of the face. All I do is tie a little bundle of a combination of sort of flash and um, some silicon uh, jig skirt material. And then I'll just shove it in there and glue it in place with the same UV resin. Typically what I'll do is just lay a little bed of UV resin into the little gap and the little port. It'll sort of ooze it out. And then I'll hit it with the UV light. And then I'll put a little extra right at the base here. And that should give us a pretty nice looking, almost natural looking little lure. Before we get out to the end of the dock, I just wanted to test the mic. I think the wind is going to be a little bit stiff. But I got our shrimp and we're ready to try it. All right, so we might as well try the most marginal one, the one that I think will probably work the least, which is the head down one. So let me tie that one on. So this one is the heads down one, and it's probably the least hopeful, I think, for a good action. But we'll see. It's, it's head down, and then The action's kind of subtle, but even then, it's kind of a little bit unsettled. I don't know. It's a little bit not very stable. Let me see if I can get a better shot with the GoPro. It does pretty well when you pull it relatively slow. But at the end of this one, you can see how it gets unstable. Here, too, you'll watch it just get a little unstable at the end. All right, this one is the, uh, the one that floats neutral. And let's see what it does on a longer cast here. Oh, much, much better. Definitely has a much more stable retrieve. I don't know if you can see on the camera the wake it's leaving. It's a pretty nice wake. And it's got a nice wiggle to it. It looks kind of enticing in the water, right? All right, let's move on. To the one that floats head up. All right, this is the last one, which is really the one I made the design for. This is the one that floats head up. Let's see how it does. You can see all the tentacles are in the water. This is the one I was hoping would work best, but it looks pretty good right there on the slow motion retrieve. The action is good and stable. And when you pull it kind of fast, it still has a pretty good action without getting crazy. But it has a really nice action. I think probably the best action of all of them. Yeah, and it's it's thumping. It actually is. This is this is actually the best. Now I really didn't know it would be the best. I honestly didn't. Even at a faster retrieve, it stays pretty stable. Now I think both the level floating one and this one with the head up both have a really nice action. And they both look pretty good in the water. But I just think this one with the tail down is just a little more enticing for a bottom-up kind of strike. Well, I gotta say I'm happy with all three, but I would have to also say that the one that floats head up looks cool when it's paused and it has a really nice action to it. So I think I'm gonna stick to that design as I go forward. Thanks to everybody who's watching and thanks to everyone who's leaving messages and offering suggestions. And hopefully I'll get around to everybody's suggestions. I'll see you on the next video.
Thank you.